Howdy folks, today we're going to take a look at our next film study technique, which is camera movement. This is another structural element in a director's toolbox to kind of affect what we as viewers see in a frame. Um, so if we take what we learned about framing, which is literally what is in this box of a screen that we get to look through, uh, it's how the director changes what's in the frame without cutting. So literally moving the camera or increasing the zoom um, to a desired effect. So again, um, what our overall goal is, we are working to analyze with support how structural choices contribute to meaning. Um, and film is a great way to take a look at this. If we understand the elements of film, we can really get at, oh, here's what the director's doing and here's why the director was doing it. And this is why it had the effect on me. So I've got the basics of camera movement right over here. Um, I would even pause this video and draw this little diagram really quick, where the basic movements are going to be dollying, which is moving back and forth, trucking, which is left and right. And if you get those two confused, I'm not so worried. If you use truck or dolly, I'm happy with it. Um, tilting is moving the camera up or down. Panning is left or right. Sorry if that makes you seasick. Zooming or zooming out. And then the last one that we're not really gonna talk about because it's rarely used is called a pedestal. And that's when literally the whole frame comes up and comes down. It's pretty rare in films, but uh, it's used sometimes. We're not gonna look at it a whole ton um, with this unit, but no, that's another movement there. Um, so we're gonna look at each one of these movements individually just to kind of get a feel of what they look like. Uh, now, unlike framing, Directors can use these different types of camera movements to really do anything. There's no, like a close-up means, hey, pay attention to this, this is important, or look at the emotion on this person's face. Camera movement, on the other hand, it doesn't really have that set language that you have to use. Um, but a director will use it to a, their desired effect. So this is what, we're gonna start with the idea of a crane movement. So this is a new one that wasn't on that last diagram, so we'll get it out of the way. And basically, as you can see, we put the camera literally on a crane so we can get those big high up shots. And if we're looking at this, as the director goes in from a medium shot to a full shot to a wide shot, using that crane, um, it's emphasizing how alone this guy is. You know, if you know the, um, if you've seen the movie, this is about a sheriff who is like the last person standing to defend this town against a, a gang of outlaws coming in. Um, so it's emphasizing his solidarity in this street. It's the empty, lonely street. Next movements we'll look at are panning and tilting. So panning is left and right. Tilting is up and down. Um, and panning often can emphasize movement. See how much faster the cars are moving when the, or it looks like they're moving when the camera goes with them, gives, because it stays kind of on the cars, but the rest of the background moves by really fast, because not only are we seeing the cars um, fly by, but we're seeing the background fly by as well. Um, also tilting, moving up and down, we can see this slight tilt on Daenerys Targaryen, where if you, Amelia Clark who plays this character. Um, she's like five foot two, five foot three. She's pretty short. But by putting the camera in that framing perspective lower and lowering it down even more as the fire explodes in the background, she looks pretty big and beastly and queenly. Um, so tilting can affect that perspective view that we're looking at. Uh, next movement we'll take a look at is what's called a handheld shot. Um, and handheld shots just give us this sense of disjointment. Um, we're gonna notice in this scene where when the camera's on this character, it's steady. But when we're on this character, it's shaky. And I want you to notice what's in Woody Harrelson's hand. It's a drink. So it's steady on the sober guy and it's shaky on the um, drunk person. And oftentimes in action movies or during action sequences, it'll be a, a handheld cam to give us that feeling like we're actually there. Um, it's kind of a very raw feeling of film. And then we've got what's called a track or a truck or a dolly. I'm not so worried if you get those two dollies front and back. 
tracking is side to side. Uh, but as long as you you understand that like we can put a camera on wheels and move it, I'm happy. You, you can call that a track or a truck or a dolly. Um, and what this allows us to do is allows the director to kind of stay with a certain subject, right? Uh, so this is Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone, running through the filthy streets of Philadelphia. Um, and this allows him to stay kind of perfectly centered in the frame. We're keeping Rocky at a nice full shot right now. So the focus is still him, even though we're not close, as close up on him. But we can see his surroundings as he runs through Philadelphia. It's really about this guy in the heart of this city um, for this awesome epic movie, Rocky. So that is tracking or trucking or dollying. All right, last one we've got is a zoom, just a simple zoom. So we're not actually moving the camera. This could be achieved with a dolly in, but we could also just change the focal length of the camera, right? Just zoom in with our lens. Um, and again, zooming in or zooming out can emphasize or de-emphasize something. So here we're zooming into this guy's face and even with a little bit of a tilt, showing like his resolve or his concern um, with what's going on. So now I've got a couple of practices for you. I want you to watch this GIF a couple of times and see if you can figure out what movements are going on. And I say movements because they're plural. So watch this. We're tracking in, we're dollying in, but then we've got our character from Ratatouille here. He stays the same size, but the TV gets bigger. Watch that. So he'll stop and the TV gets bigger. And I know this is a cartoon, but this effect can also be achieved in, in actual live filming as well. Um, so what happens is we're going to dolly in, we're going to stop, and then we're going to start dollying out and zooming the camera lens in at the same time, which is, it, it's awkward. Um, but what this does is this allows our, whatever our foreground object is, to generally stay the same size because we're backing up and zooming in at the same time but it's going to narrow the focus of the background. So this is our foreground, stay there. Now we start backing up and zooming in at the same time, focusing in on that TV to great effect, right? Um, this really allows us to see how the TV and this chef is becoming so much more absorbed um, in Remy's mind and Ratatouille. Last gift I have for you, for today, just for some little practice, is the scene from The Lion King. So we've got a couple movements going on down here. I'll let you see it one more time. And see if you can guess what it is. So what we've got is we've got a pan. We're panning around an object. So panning doesn't just mean the camera stays still and looks left and right. We can also focus on an object and pan around it. Um, and then we've, I think we've got another movement as well, because we're not just panning. I think we're tilting a little bit too. Because see how we kind of start up above them, and then we kind of look down below like it's almost looking up at them. So I'd say a pan and a tilt would be my guess. Well, what's going on here? All right. Um, that's a crash course to cam camera movements. Good luck, folks, and enjoy.